Hello, my students in grade 10. Uh, I hope you are all doing good. This is a math lecture uh, and uh, we started in the classroom our lesson, which was about uh, the absolute value. And today I'm going to continue the second part of our lesson. We finished with part one and today I'm going to continue with part two. So as you can see, I'm sharing the screen now, the absolute value and intervals. And this is part two of our lesson. What are we going to learn together in our lesson, which is the absolute value and intervals? Uh, we will use the intervals and we will know how we write an interval of an inequality uh, and how we find their midpoint, their radius, and the length of the interval. But before I start, we finished in part one how we solve an equation with absolute value. So the first two slides will be uh, a memory refresh of what we've done during a week in the classroom together. So if you look here, we can see an equation. Why is this an equation? Why is it an equation? It's an equation because it is two sides. This is side one, absolute value 3k minus one minus four is in side one and six is on side two. And in between we have an equal. So to solve this equation with absolute value, we should follow these three steps. Number one, we should isolate. I will tell you what we mean by isolate. Number two, we take two cases. And number three, we solve each case. What do we mean by isolate? On side one, I should only have absolute value. I should not have a number with the absolute value on side one. So this minus four to isolate, I take the minus four to side two. So I will write 3K minus one absolute equal. If I take the minus four on the second side, it will become plus four. So directly I've written six plus four is 10. So now my equation is isolated. On the first side, we have only the absolute value equal a number on the second side. Now I go to two cases. In the two cases, I draw a table, same and opposite. What do we mean by same? I take 3K minus one, which is on the first side, equal to 10 in the same. And in the opposite, I take 3K minus one, the first side equal to minus 10. So my second side in the same will be positive and in the opposite will be negative. Now I start solving each equation. Let us start solving equation one, 3K equal 10. I take minus one to the second side, it becomes 11. So 3K equals 11, then K is equal to 11 over three. This is the first solution. Let's solve the second one, 3K equal minus 10 plus one, which is minus nine, then K equal minus nine over three, then K is equal to minus three. Now, how do I write my solutions? You know that I should write um, curly brackets. I start with the smallest solution, then I go to the largest solution. So I write minus a three, 11 over three are the solutions of this absolute value equation. Also, as another example, we have uh, this equation on both sides, we have absolute value. As you can see, the first side on it, we have only absolute value. So it is isolated. So directly I do the same and opposite. In the same, I write K plus two equal three K plus a three. And in the opposite, I write K plus two equal minus three K plus the three minus the second side. So I start solving the first one. I take all the variables to side one and all the numbers to side two. While taking from side to side, I change signs. So minus two K equal one, then K is equal to minus half. And in the second one, K will be equal to minus five over four. Now I write my solutions minus five over four and minus half. So this is what we were doing in the 
last week we were in the school, we were solving absolute values with equations with absolute values. Now, as a refresh, we use the absolute value to calculate the distance between two points on an axis. So for any positive real number r, we have absolute x equal r. This is equivalent to x equal r and x equal to minus r. Also, in general, for any two real numbers, x and a, x minus a absolute equal r, then x equal a plus r and x equal a minus r. As examples, absolute value x equal minus 2, of course, this is impossible. It's impossible to have an absolute value equal to a negative. Absolute x equal 4, then x equal 4 or minus 4. These are equations as we solved in the slide before. Absolute x minus 2 equal 5. Then we have two cases, x minus 2 equal 5 and x minus 2 equal minus 5. We solve each equation to get the solution. Also here in number four, absolute x plus three equals seven, then x plus three equals seven, and or x plus three equals minus seven. In the last one, x minus one equals absolute two x plus three, then x minus one equals two x plus a three, and x minus one equals minus parenthesis two x plus a three, and we solve the equation. You can practice this. Uh, the, la uh, the past slide, you can practice it on a draft. Now we start with inequalities. But before I start solving absolute value inequalities, I will remind you of graphing inequalities. When we solve an inequality, we should uh, draw a, uh, an axis. So now we use bracket method. What do we mean by the bracket method? I'll talk about it. We use open bracket if the end points is less than or greater than. We use a closed bracket if the end point is less than or equal, greater than or equal. So an open bracket if we have less than, greater than. A closed bracket if we have less than or equal, greater than or equal. And I'll give you two examples. For example, in the first one, x is less than 2. How do we graph this solution? We draw an axis. As you can see, this is the solution too. So because here we do not have an equal, it's only less than. So my bracket, this is the bracket I'm talking about. My bracket should be opened on the two and it is less than. So my solutions are in this area. My solution cannot be two. It can be one, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, et cetera. But it cannot be two. As a second example, x greater than or equal to. Now, because we have or equal, look at my solutions now. So it is closed on the two. So we close it here on the two. And it's greater than. So it can be two, three, four, five, six, whatever value we have in the side of the axis. Now, inequalities and interval notation. How do we write the interval notation? So this is the interval notation. This is closed and this is closed. If it is opened, it will be drawn opened on the second side. But always inside these brackets, we will put the smallest value, so then we write the largest value. As we did before in the equation, when we write the solutions, Always we start with the smaller, then we write the bigger one. So here I have infinity. The infinity, you know that numbers in math never end the negative numbers or the positive numbers. So we say we have 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, et cetera. What do we mean by et cetera? We go towards the minus infinity. Also, when we start the positive numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we say et cetera. So always my numbers on both sides go towards the minus infinity and the plus infinity. So this is what I mean by the infinity. Always the minus infinity and the plus infinity we write or we use for them an open bracket. Now, 
if I have a solution of an inequality where x is less than two, so I draw my axis. This is the minus infinity. This side is the plus infinity. So because here we do not have or equal, we open it on the two and it goes towards the minus infinity. So how do I write this as an interval? The minus infinity is less than the two. So I write open a bracket on the minus minus infinity and open a bracket on the two. So this is my solution. So open a bracket on the minus infinity, open a bracket on the two because we do not have an equal here. Another example, for example, I have x greater than or equal to. So it is closed on the two and it's going towards the plus infinity. So my uh, interval notation will be closed on two, towards the plus infinity and on the plus infinity, we open our bracket. The last example, if I have a solution between two numbers, this is a three part inequality. How do we read this? X is between four and nine. So it cannot be four and it cannot be nine because we do not have or equal here. So on the four, it will be opened as you can see. And on the nine, like here, on the four, it is opened and on the nine it is opened so my solution is between in this side where it is purple so it can be five six seven eight so as you can see it's between four and nine and it's opened on both now inequalities and also how do we uh, write the uh, interval notation x greater than or equal five so i draw my axis look at the five here on the positive because i have or equal so it will be closed on the five going towards the plus infinity so if i wanted to write an interval notation i close it on five and i open it on the plus infinity as this now, another example, x is less than negative 3. I draw the axis, and on the negative 3, I put a, an open interval, and it's going towards the minus infinity. So my solution will be opened on the minus infinity and opened on the minus 3 because we do not have or equal. Please, these two slides that how we write the interval notation, practice them on draft. And if you have any question directly, you can contact me. Now, how we solve an inequality? Now, I'm still talking about inequalities. I'm not talking about uh, absolute value. So the question here, we should solve, then graph the solution and write it in interval notation. And I'm reminding you of the set builder notation. If I have a 3x plus 4 greater than 7, this is an inequality because we have a greater than all the x on side 1 and all all the numbers on side two. So 3x is greater than three. Now, when my in equation is in this level, I look at the coefficient of x. Since it is positive, so I divide all my equation on uh, my in equation on three. So x is greater than one. How do we do this on an axis? I draw the axis. This is the one. It's opened or closed on the one because we do not have or equal. So it will be opened on the one. Look how, how I will do it opened on the one going towards the plus infinity. So how will be my interval notation? It is opened on the one going towards the plus infinity. Set builder notation. A equal, it is a set, X belongs to N, you know, from one to, to the positive, it will be a natural number. So X is a positive number where X is greater than one. Another example, I have four minus nine K greater than or equal minus four K plus 19. So all the K, which is the variable on side one, all the numbers on side two. If I subtract minus 9K plus 4K, I'll get minus 5K greater than or equal 15. Now I look at the coefficient of K. Is it positive 
or negative, it's negative. So I multiply all the equation by a minus. And please always remember, when you multiply your inequation by a minus, we flip the uh, greater than or equal, it becomes less than or equal. So when I multiply by a minus, I'll get 5k less than or equal negative 15. Now I divide all my inequality by 5. So k is less than or equal minus 3. How do I do this? I draw the axis on the negative 3 here. It will be opened or closed. It will be closed. Why? Because we have or equal here. So I close it on the minus three and it is minus infinity minus three. This is the interval notation minus infinity minus three. As I said, it's always opened on the minus infinity and because we have or equal, so it's closed on the minus three. To write it as a set builder notation, A equal X belongs to Z, Y because we have negative numbers here. X is a number strictly less than minus three. Also another example, minus five over three P greater than minus 10. So minus five P greater than three into minus 10. I multiply all my equation by three to get rid of the denominator. Now minus five P is greater than minus 30 because it's a negative coefficient of the variable. I multiply all the inequality by a minus and I flip the sign. So five P is less than 30. P is less than six. Now I do my uh, solution on an axis. I come to the six, it's opened or closed, it's opened on the six. So I do it opened on the six and it is less than going this way. So the interval notation will be minus infinity six and six is opened. Now, how we solve absolute value in an inequation. If I have an inequation now with an absolute value, how can we solve it? This is very similar to how we solve it with equation. Now, if I have absolute x less than or equal a, and my solution will be x between minus a and a. Why we take a less than here or equal because here we have a less than or equal. X greater than or equal A if and only if X is less than or equal minus A, X greater than or equal A. So this is how we write the interval. If I have absolute value X less than or equal R, so X will belong to minus R plus R. If I have absolute value X greater than or equal R, my solutions will be the union of minus infinity minus R plus R plus infinity. And uh, this is as example. So if I have absolute value X less than or equal negative two, of course, this is impossible because absolute value can never be less than or equal negative two. Uh, as we said, absolute value x equal negative two also this is impossible. And this is how we solve our inequations. Now use the intervals to find the midpoint and radius and length of an interval. These are rules. So if I have an interval a, b, I want to find its midpoint or center. There is a rule to find the midpoint or center. We add the two numbers, A and B, and we divide by two. Always when we find the midpoint, whatever we have, we divide by two. So please, these rules should be memorized. This is how we find the midpoint or the center of an interval. C equal A plus B over two. What's A and what's B? They are the numbers of my intervals, I add them and I divide by two. The radius of an interval is B minus A over two. This is how we find the radius. Also, this rule should be memorized. And uh, also, these definitions are valid on open interval, not only on closed interval. Every interval with midpoint zero, its radius is minus R plus R. An interval with center C and radius R has this form, C minus R, which is the center minus the radius and the center plus the radius.
Now, as examples, for example, if I have, what's the center of the interval minus five, five, since they are on the same distance from zero, then my radius will be five. How do we do this? It's very, it's very easy if we follow this rule, B, which is five minus, minus, uh, minus A, which is minus five. So five plus five over two, it's equal to five. If we have to find the center of this, it is also B minus A over two. You can do the calculation and find it. Now, as a practice on equations and inequations, I have given you this exercise. Some of them are equations and some of them are in equations. Please, and it is a solved exercise. I solved all the exercise for you, all with all the steps and how we write our solutions. Please solve these exercises on a draft. They are very easy. We solved such exercises in the classroom, uh, but you should apply now what we solved on the in equations and we solved many equations in the uh, classroom. After you watch this uh, video, please, whatever you have, any questions, any things that you didn't get, contact me directly on WhatsApp and we do this when we get together in the classroom in the uh, coming uh, days. Thank you and I hope I'll see you all uh, soon.